and now what we're going to do is, is uh, we're going to get somebody who's, who's a great old friend of mine um, who's, who's got an amazing story. And, and uh, Hugh Royer is right here in town. He, he's the uh, teacher now up at Tidewater. He, I played uh, golf with Hugh going back to college, going back to what's uh, now the Web.com Tour and the Nike Tour, made his way to the PGA Tour. And, and Hugh's had a tough, he's had a tough road. He had uh, some real serious heart problems in college. And lately he's been dealing with something that all of us that play golf need to understand is really important and it can be really dangerous. He's had uh, a heck of a run with skin cancer. And, and Hugh, I believe it's the first time he's going to get up and tell his story. And, and uh, I, I'd just like for you guys to hang out and hear what Hugh has to say. Hugh, Hugh Royer, come on up to the stage, Hugh. Where are you, buddy? One of my great friends, and uh, he's, he's had it tough. And uh, I know what he's going to do now is going to inspire you folks and also educate you a little bit as well. Take it away, Hugh. Well, thank you all for sitting here. I really appreciate it. I, I figured everybody would be running, doing whatever. No, Charlie's right. We've known each other a long, long time. Um, I won South Carolina. That was my first Nike Tour win, web.com. And Charlie actually got a chance to follow me and do it the next year. Um, by the way, our pictures are still hanging there, and we looked awful. So it's, it was good. I wanted to come here and do this. Bill Golden and Golf Holiday asked me to come and talk to you because the main thing is I've come up here and spoke to you about golf, about your golf swing, about how to read Bermuda grass greens. And Lord knows our friends from the north, you can't read Bermuda grass. And then I've talked about preparation, how you come in here. You spend all this money to come here, but you don't play practice rounds. I'm going to talk to you about skin cancer. And do me a favor. There's probably a lot of people here that have had skin cancer removed, whether it's basal, whether it's squamous, or whether it's melanoma. It's a very common thing. But if anybody says basal cell is easily treated, don't worry about it, just take a look at my face. It wasn't a bar fight. It wasn't a car wreck. This stuff is serious. All three of these can kill you. If they're caught early enough, yes, they are treatable and you'll be fine. One in five Americans are diagnosed with skin cancer. So think about everybody in this room right now. One in five. Three million Americans a year are diagnosed, if not more, with skin cancer. What a lot of people don't understand and a lot of things that I've learned, because I spent a little over three months at MUSC. 26 and a half hours worth of surgery in three and a half weeks. 30 rounds of radiation. And I got to know my doctors very, very well. And I've got a team that is phenomenal. My oncologist ENT that did the surgeries and my reconstructive surgeon, which I've still got two, maybe three of those left. You put their ages together, they might reach 70 years old, maybe. And these guys are geniuses. My reconstructive surgeon scored the highest on the medical boards in the United States that's ever been recorded. So I've got a great team behind me. But what people don't understand, and I'm talking from the standpoint of we go outside all the time. We play golf. There's a lot of people that they get in the car and they go to work and they come home. You can get skin cancer riding in your car because the sun coming through the win windows. The one thing I want to say, and I don't want to get in trouble, but our friend, I've got a lot of friends that are African American. African Americans die from skin cancer three times more than Caucasians. You think about it. You are a Caucasian, you get a place on your body and you look at it and it's, it looks funny. An African American person with the color of their skin, they don't see that. And by the time they catch it, 
it can be too late. The way I want to go with this is for you to understand that, and this is really going to sound silly, and I apologize, but you get up every morning, you get in the shower, you get out, you brush your teeth, you put deodorant on. You don't think twice about it, do you? What you need to do is you need to do that, and then you need to put sunscreen on. As silly as that sounds, and it might take you an extra three minutes, you put sunscreen on. Skin cancer shows up in eight places on your body, the most common. Obviously, your face. Then it becomes your scalp, your neck, your chest, your back, your legs. And then you start thinking about it, well, where else is it going to go? The soles of your feet and the palms of your hands. That blew me away. I'm like, how do I get it here? This has always got a golf club in it or it's, you know. But the soles of your feet, I get it. You're laying on the beach. Your feet are sitting up. Makes sense. My story, and I'm going to try to run through this and not dwell on it too much. I had basal removed from the nostrils of my nose. They were open lesions. They would bleed. They would stop. They never healed. They never scabbed. Went to, in 2015, went to a dermatologist, had them removed. The doctor told me, you've got five years. Guaranteed you're good for five years. You read all the research, five years. After that, you need to get rechecked and go from there. Well, in two and a half years, I got a place on the side of my nose right here. And it was like a hard pimple. And it looked like you took a pen and just clicked it in the tip of a writing pen. That's what it was like, a hard pimple. Thought about it, talked to my general doctor, general practitioner. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's nothing. It's a pimple. It'll go away. Well, a few months later, it got bigger. When it got bigger, I started to look at it and go, hang on. Went back, because I get my blood checked every six weeks. When I was 22 years old, I had open heart surgery. I've got an artificial valve in my heart. I've been on Coumadin for 32 years. So I go in every six weeks to get this checked. I would ask him, what's going on? I, it's nothing. I don't know. I have no idea. So I went back to the dermatologist that I originally went to that removed the basal cell. This man had retired. He was 70 years old. He quit. The doctor that bought him out, I had to fill out paperwork. I could get back in, but I had to fill all the paperwork out. And then all of a sudden, I can't get to see this man for three months. So I see the PA, who's his wife, because I can get in to see her. They remove a bubble on the tip of my nose because the basal cell was here. Send it off, gets done, it's nothing. So I'm asking her while I'm still there, because this is a couple of days later that this comes back, what is this? What is this bump? I don't think it's anything. I don't know. Goes out, here's her husband, brings him in, the doctor. He looks at it, he goes, it's a staph infection. I'm like, staph infection? You haven't swabbed it? You haven't checked it? Okay, gives me an oral antibiotic and gives me the ointment, put it on a Q-tip, put it in your both nostrils twice a day. When it's gone, you should be good. As crazy as it sounds, it's a doctor. You trust them. You go to a doctor, you're going to trust them, correct? So I go and go through this, and the ointment, you're not going to cake this stuff in your nose. You put enough in there to whatever, and it lasts a good six months. Well, in six months, this has gotten bigger. It hadn't gotten gone away. So now I'm looking at it like I'm not going back to this guy. I'm going to go to somebody else. 
So luckily, my wife is a golf provider here in Myrtle Beach. So all your vacations, whatever you need, call Heather at Condo World. She's phenomenal. She sits with me, and the man she works with gets me into the so-called best dermatologist in Myrtle Beach. I go in and see this man. Now, you see me standing here. I played golf, and I've been in the sun my whole life. I played the tour 14 years. I've won four times on the web.com. I played the tour. Tiger and I are rookies together. You name them, I know them. I probably got them in my phone. I get in to see this doctor. He's checking all these freckles. And I got freckles. You can see them. They're all over me. He goes, you're good. You got no skin cancer. I said, what about this bump? By now, it's probably the size of, I don't know, an eraser. He goes, you know, I've got a Titleist hat on with my Oakley sitting up there. He goes, you wear those sunglasses all the time. I said, yes, I do. He goes, put them on. So I put them on. They fit right behind that bump. And I promise you right now on my life, this is what this man said to me. He goes, that's nerve aggravation from your sunglasses. He goes, you need to get felt pads to put on your sunglasses or don't wear sunglasses. Now, I've had basal cell here, and I've got a bump here that's growing, and it's nerve aggravation. Again, this is the best man in Myrtle Beach as a dermatologist. You're going to trust him. My wife's sitting with me. We looked at each other like, what in the Sam Hill is this man talking about? So I didn't wear sunglasses for six months. Six months go by. I get up one morning, and I looked at my wife, and I said, you know, <laughs> this thing's getting bigger. I, I don't know what to do. She goes, we got to get somebody to look at it. They look at it. I cannot get back in to see this dermatologist. They tell me two months. I go pick up a script one day from my doctor, run into his nurse, and I'm like, who do I need to go see? I need a referral. I got to go see somebody. She gives me the name of an ear, nose, and throat doctor here. And I will throw his name out there because this man saved my life. His name's Daniel Rosner. He saved my life. I got in through him because I went back to the dermatologist. I could not see him for two months. It would be June. This is the Friday of Augusta. It would be June. So I, but I could see his PA. I saw her 8 o'clock on a Monday morning. I walk in. I'm leaving that morning to go to Hilton Head to spend time with friends of mine that play the tour and are tour reps just to get away. This lady walks in. She goes, Mr. Royer, why are you here? I said, this, this bump. Well, by now, it's the size of a nickel. And I'm not kidding you. If I could put a picture up there, you would go, oh, my God. I said, she goes, you want a referral for Dr. Rosner? I said, please. This lady touched it and within two minutes had taken two pictures and was on the phone, and she goes, they can see you this afternoon at 4 o'clock. I said, well, I'm leaving to go out of town. It's been a year and a half. I've chased this down trying to find out what it is. What's three days? I'm going to go to Hilton Head and relax. I come back, see the doctor. We go through the whole deal, sticks that long scope down my nose. By the way, that hurts like crap. There's a mass there. We're going to CT scan. That doesn't come back the way he wants it. They're going to do a biopsy. Do a biopsy. comes back basal cell. Do not. Do not tell me basal cell is treatable and it's no big deal. Okay? Do not. All three cancers, basal, squamous, or melanoma, can kill you if they are not detected early. Every one of them. So he goes in to operate right here at Grand Strand Hospital. It's supposed to be two and a half hours. It lasted an hour. He walked out into the waiting room in his scrubs. My wife's sitting there with my daughter, my beautiful 16-year-old daughter. And he goes, 
My wife about had a heart attack. He goes, this thing is so big and so much more invasive, I'm sending him to MUSC in Charleston. On Tuesday, I was in Charleston meeting with an oncologist ENT. On Wednesday, I had surgery. It lasted seven and a half hours. He walked out and he goes, I need an MRI. We don't know how far this is going. This is basal cell. It's not supposed to spread to any organ in your body, and it's running down this orbital optical nerve right here in my, right here. Do the MRI, they find out my artificial valve can stand in the MRI. They do it, he knows what to do. I go in for surgery again. It was supposed to start at 10 o'clock. Heather, what time did it start? Three? 3.30? They finished at midnight. The man walked out. My wife and daughter are sitting out here. He hugged them. He said, I got it all. He goes, I wasn't leaving till I got it all. I don't know. I'm, I'm stoned as a moose. I don't know. I'm out of it. There's pictures. I have no nose. The only thing I have left that's original is right here, my nostrils. All of this was gone. All the cheek is gone. The nerve, the muscle. If I smile, look what my lip does. It goes down. I can't pull it back up. I was told for a year and a half, this is nothing. There's not, no need to treat it, no need to do anything. Folks, what I'm trying to tell you is do self and look at yourself. You know your bodies, right? Trust your gut. Don't be afraid to check yourself. If you see something and you don't like it, who cares? Go to the doctor. Get them checked out. Because if it's nothing, guess what? No harm, no foul. But if it is something, it will save your life. Right now, I'm fighting like crazy. I've got a little spot from an MRI that's probably scar tissue, but they, they want to look at it again in two months. It freaked me out the other day when they told me after doing an MRI. You're scared. It's cancer. Skin cancer is the most popular cancer or the most common cancer in this country. Don't be afraid to check yourselves. Don't be afraid to get up, you get out of the shower, you get everything ready to go. Ladies, you wear makeup, it's got SPF in it. But gentlemen, put sunscreen on every day. I don't care if you're going to an office to work nine to five. You're riding in a car. You're riding next to a window. How many times do you look and your left arm is more tan than your right arm? You can get skin cancer through the window of your car. You don't understand that. This is real. This stuff can kill you. Don't become another statistic. I'm trying not to. I beg you not to. I'm fighting like heck. I've got a wife and four kids. My life, I played the tour. I played with Tiger Woods. Played with Charlie Reimer, for Christ's sake, as bad as that was in McGinnis. We all grew up together. This is serious. This right here, thank God, is temporary. The funny part about this, and here's the joke. I feel like I look like Quasimodo. My wife gets pissed when I say it. I can touch my nose anywhere here, and I feel it right here. This skin on my nose is because it came from my forehead. It's called a forehead flap. It was this wide and that deep, and you see it's filled in. I've got two, probably three more reconstructive surgeries, and I'm going to be as close as I can get to looking like normal. I'll never feel anything in my lip. I'll never feel anything here. I've got a beautiful wife. We've been married 20 years. I give her a kiss. I don't feel it. That's a hard pill to swallow. Okay? Take care of yourselves. Don't be afraid to check. And by the way, if you're married, you guys can have some fun and check each other. But this is serious. Skin cancer will kill you if you're not careful. I thank you all for listening. 
I know it's not the greatest subject in the world, but if you play golf, this will affect you. And there's probably a lot of people in this audience that have had stuff removed. Just keep checking. Keep doing your thing. Thank you. God bless. Play well this week. Hugh, thank you, buddy. I really appreciate it. Hugh Royer is a great friend. Got a lot of people who love you, praying for you. I'm one of them, buddy. I appreciate it. On the bright side, you didn't look too good before you started having this surgery anyway. Well, that makes two of us. <laughs> thank you, Hugh. You're welcome.